Hello. You are listening to the Grieving Parents Sharing Hope podcast. We are here to walk with parents on their unwanted journey of child loss, guiding them to a place of hope, light, and purpose, not in spite of their child's death, but as a way to honor his or her life. And now, here is your host, author, speaker, and bereaved parent, Laura Deal. Hi. Today we are continuing to dig into Isaiah 61, verse 3, and I don't know anyone better to bring in on this third part that God will give us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and despair than my precious friend, Angelique Marketon. Angelique was born and raised in Germany until she moved to Florida where she met her husband, Tony. Worship has always been something that draws Angelique closer to God. She's been a songwriter and a worship leader for many years, and her ministry through music was starting to grow to a national level as area churches would ask her to come and lead worship for their events, and her recordings were starting to get noticed. Then her world crashed down around her, which you will hear her share. Since that time, she has gone from being strong and continuing to lead worship to isolating herself as she took that huge dive down into the dark abyss we are all too familiar with. She is back to leading worship, but with a different heart of the raw and real wounds of life, and I believe an even deeper anointing. So here is my conversation with Angelique Marketon. Well, hi, Angelique. I am always glad when we get the chance to spend time together, and I am especially excited to have you join me on today's topic. Hey, Laura. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yes. We always enjoy spending time together, even if it's over the internet, over the phone, whatever it is, face-to-face. So I don't know. We're just one of those relationships. We just click. Yeah, um, it's easy. Yeah, yeah, it is. (laughs) So as far as the podcast and what we're talking about right now, the last three weeks, we have been digging into Isaiah 61.3 which says Mm -hmm. he has sent me to tell them that they will receive a crown of beauty for ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness and despair. When I think about that last part, I think about you. (laughs) You just immediately (laughs) come to mind. And we're going to be talking about that, receiving a garment of praise instead of a spirit of heaviness and despair. You are a worship leader and Mm -hmm. I would say one of those up and rising worship leaders, I mean, nationally known, I mean, you're, the Lord was really blessing you and you were beginning to really have his favor and leading larger and larger groups and things. And then Isaiah. Um, So can you share Isaiah's story with us, please? Let's start there. So Isaiah is my only child and um, he was uh, killed in a in a terrible accident when he was 16 years old, um, October 27th, 2018. And I was leading worship at that time, very, very involved in church, starting to do events and stuff like that, starting to get requests. And everything was good. Mm-hmm. Everything was good in life, you know, obviously until, until we lost him. Yeah. And wanna... he, well, and he was in an accident with several other boys his age and he was the only one that lost his life correct yeah so there were there was another kid in the back of the truck with him they were they were sitting in the the bed of the truck and then there were four kids i think in the in the front and uh, i don't even think the other kids were wearing seat belts and they were driving the the kid that was driving was fishtailing and kind of you know having fun maybe being showing a, off yeah being a know. teenage boy driving yeah, exactly. And uh, he ended up losing control. He hit a tree, hit another tree, and then the truck went upside down into a canal. And then Isaiah hit his head and died instantly. And all the other kids got out. And, you know, some of the kids, I think, were doing mouth to mouth on him to try to save him, but it didn't work. And uh, that's how he died. And none of the other kids, I, I don't, they barely even got scratches, I think. I think one of them hurt his feet a little bit. And I think that was it. Mm. So. Yeah, and, yeah, it was instant. Yeah, and I someone introduced us kind of socially over the internet, and it was just like a few months after Isaiah died, and it was um, yeah, like three months or something. I think yeah, yeah. And yeah. I I watched you. There was a video out there, <laughs> and yeah. you had gone on. Well, I'll say on stage, you had gone up a big event. You sang. You led a worship. 
and gave a testimony about the goodness of God in your grief and losing your son. And I'm watching this thinking, I've got to get a hold of this woman because <laughs> she's she's in shock. Oh, yeah. She's still in shock. Yeah. She This has not hit her yet. No. <laughs> the reality yeah. of what has happened. God graciously put us together. Uh, we were we had just started traveling in the Hope Mobile. We headed down to Florida, and you and Tony agreed to meet us at a neutral restaurant, Fish Lips, yep. <laughs> which yep. we have now been to a few times since then. It has just been a wonderful relationship. And I'll just mention, I just now, I wasn't, I just, this just now came to me, but Angelique and Tony are the reason I have a CD. So they were the ones that helped us record. <laughs> um, Angelique has a recording studio in her home. And uh, I mean, so she's a serious worshiper and she will. I mean, it's a little time. amateur, but it's, it, it gets the job done for sure. You know? It sure does. And, and mm -hmm. sometimes every once in a while, and I know it's seasonal and sporadic based on where you are in your journey you'll get on live on Facebook and you'll just worship and allow people to just join you. And yeah. you'll just pour out your heart before the Lord and just kind of see what, what comes out. <laughs> and it's, and it's very precious and it's very beautiful. And so you're not just a worship leader. You are a worshiper. Mm. So how did Isaiah's death affect that part of your life in a personal way in the area of worship? Yeah. Huge. Um, yeah, so I was actually doing a lot of lives right before Isaiah died. I was really like actually pushing myself to do it. You know, it's I always I'm very picky about how my sound is. And, you know, Tony always has this my husband has always has to set everything up and it has to be just right. And I think we had just gotten it right. So like for months I was kind of coasting. I was, you know, doing a lot of lives and it was great. I, I was enjoying it. And uh but then when Isaiah died. And can, I, let me I ask, actually, remind me, how many years has this been? You're coming up on that anniversary. It'll be four it's years. Four, I was going to say four On the years. 27th of this month. Yeah. 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 So I'm Doesn't, just gonna... it, It's like, it seems longer, but it seems shorter at the same I time. I know. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So this will be coming out right after the anniversary. Oh, uh, okay. So, yep. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, after, as soon as Isaiah died, um, I, literally hours after he died, I remember, and I, I know I've told you the story before, I looked at my mom and, and I said, Mom, I don't think I'll ever sing again. Like, I literally, I just felt uh -huh. this, like, like a shutdown for it. Like, I, I just could never sing again. Like, there was too much joy in it. Uh -huh. you know, I enjoyed it. It's like, you know, it's like my whole identity was wrapped up in in that you mm. know what I mean and mm -hmm. then after Isaiah died it was like how could I do anything that I find joy in it's it's unrealistic but it's that's right. how you feel when something like that happens you know mm -hmm. and I was like I, I don't think I'll ever write again like this is this is can't happen anymore you know what I mean mm -hmm. it just doesn't right so um I didn't do anything at all I mean obviously when the first few weeks you're in such shock you can't even mm -hmm. breathe or right how right yes or write or anything but after like three weeks um I was at my mom still and Tony, my husband actually brought my keyboard there and I started, uh, I asked him to bring it. I said, I think I'm ready to maybe play a little bit. And I just like, he set it up in a corner at my mom's house in the living room. I started playing. I wasn't able to go to my house yet because mm -hmm. everything was Isaiah there, you know, mm -hmm. so I just yes. deal with it yet. So I stayed there, but I tried uh, playing a little bit and, you know, I started feeling something and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I am going to sing again, you know, who knows? So, but then like, eventually I went home and then, um, there was all of a sudden another day where I was like, I feel like I, I need to write something. And, uh, you know, I hadn't done any lives or anything at all. Like this, uh -huh. was, this was like, I think this was three weeks after still. So this was just after I left my mom's house, but that's when all of a sudden I feel like God gave me a song. And uh, it, it's it, a lot of it is based on psalms. It's, I couldn't give you one specific psalm because it's like different sections yes. and also my own words mingled in it. You know what I mean? You're crying so, out along with David's crying out. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all about crying out in the midst of total despair and, you know, how I'm desperate for him to come and help me and, and all of that stuff. So and then kind of like by faith, like in the bridge, I talk about how he comes and helps me you know and it's like i'm singing this by faith you know what mm -hmm. I mean? you don't, you <laughs> singing it by faith all, yes exactly yes yeah so that was like the beginning of starting to do a little singing but then i i tried to do lives again after you know a, a few months 
and I, I had such a hard time. I couldn't like my first life. I cried the whole time, just trying to explain mm-hmm. to people why I haven't sang. And so it's like, I did one, but it was so emotional. You know what I mean? So actually to this day, I haven't done a lot of lives. I'll do lives here yeah. and there. Um, but not too many. Cause those are, they're very vulnerable. I feel like yes. you know, I've done too many, but I do them once in a while, mm-hmm. but I have started leading worship again. My pastor now, I, I really like him a lot. He's amazing. Um, he asked me for a while and I kept saying no. And then I said, I'll pray about and it. Can, and, let me clarify, because I think some yeah. people struggle with this too. This is a different church now than mm-hmm. what you were going to oh, yeah. when Isaiah yeah. died. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just too many memories. And everybody there, I knew them. Everybody knew my son. Uh, it, it was too painful for me and to did go you, back. Did you feel like because you had been such a strong worship leader there, did you feel like whether it was your own pressure or coming from the outside or internal, that there was just an expectation and a pressure on you to continue that? I mean, I I probably put that pressure on myself. You know, you always feel that a little bit. And I knew they needed somebody at the beginning, but then, you know, my friends kind of, they came in and started doing it. And then somebody else ended up leading again. But yeah, maybe I put on myself, you know, they wanted me to come back, obviously, but Mm-hmm. Yeah, I probably now did my- you did you and Tony quit going to church for a while or did you keep going? Yeah, well, I wasn't able to go to church at all. Well, first of all, my physical my back went out the day before Isaiah died. Yes. So I wasn't able to sit or stand at all, which is funny because now I'm in the same boat again. My back just went out again. So yeah, she's I'm talking to me laying been- on her couch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this has been going on for like seven years on and off. So um, but when Isaiah died, it was the worst, like the day before he died, it started. So I couldn't really lead anyways, but mm-hmm. even when my, got, my back got better then yeah, I just kind of, I, I just couldn't really go there. Like every time I went to church, I cried. Tony mm-hmm. ended up going, um, by himself to help them mm-hmm. because he just kind of needed that. He, you yes. know how men deal with it differently too. Like right. he needs the distraction, I think. Yes. Um, and I stayed home then, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? I, I couldn't yes. do church at all. I, I was really processing, like trying to figure out where I was with God. Like that's a crazy change in your life to lose your child. Like, you know, especially as a worship leader, it's like, uh, yes, where did I go wrong? What did I do? You know, you feel like it's you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and to be a worship leader and a worshiper and then to have to sort out, do I still want to worship you? <laughs> right. I, you know, I mean, just the raw realness of it. You know, mm-hmm. my child's gone. My only child. Do right. <laughs> I'm supposed to be leading people into your presence, and I don't even know right. if I want to be in your presence. Right yeah, now, and it, yeah, it's like critical. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. It really makes you question God. Like, I don't care who you yeah, are. And then it's like, was all that real? You. Was I just pretending to worship you? I, 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 right. I mean, it just, it just. I mean, we yeah. all know that world that it throws us into. But I think as someone who is used to leading other believers Mm -hmm. into the presence of God and then to find yourself in that place of, is this all real? What was I I think we'd be lying to ourselves if, if, if we can't admit that that's what we think, you know, it might not be a 24 hour thought in my mind, in our minds, but I think Mm -hmm. we do that, you know, because it's not normal. It's not normal to lose your child. Mm -hmm. It's like, we're not taught to deal with that. I think, you know, exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's it was difficult to to know if I even wanted to lead anymore, and I didn't want to lead for a few years, mm-hmm. it, and yeah. I didn't. So, right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So there was another pastor that you already knew, and he kept approaching you about, "I would love to have you lead worship yeah. for our people," mm-hmm. and you kept saying no for a long time. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> right, you and I right. would talk about this too. <laughs> yeah. And uh-huh. I actually, somebody, a friend of mine who was leading worship there, he asked me to lead with him for an event a couple of times. They had a worship night. So I led with them and um, I guess they like, they liked the way that I was leading. And um, they, my pastor has been, had been watching me on Facebook. He he kept telling me later on, he's like, I've been watching you. I've been watching mm-hmm. you. The way you're dealing with everything and, you know, all of that. And I was really honest with him. You know, I told him, I said, you probably don't want me to lead because like, I'm like a heathen right now. Like, you, you don't understand. Like, if you could be in my head, the words that I'm thinking are probably not so godly. You know, like, I I don't know if you'd want that. And and he was kind of like, I really appreciate your honesty. I really like, I think that mm-hmm. he really liked the fact that I was honest about it. I still felt like, I, I mean, I, I was, I asked him really hard questions. I said, why, what makes me, 
worthy to go up there and lead your flock. Like, you know, right. I just feel I'm not a good person to do it at all. Mm -hmm. I don't even know where I am with God right now, you know, but he just like, he was able to somehow look past it. And I don't know if maybe God um, showed him things about the whole situation, you know, that maybe mm -hmm. he should continue to ask me. I don't know, because I, I think it, at the end of the day, it really was good for me. You know, he, he's, he's so down to earth. And even though I think a little bit different in some of the faith things, uh, healing, the, the area mm -hmm. of healing and stuff like that, we, we're able to really communicate about it and he doesn't judge me at all. I think he gets it. And actually his dad was murdered oh, when he was wow. younger. So I think he understands grief. Yes. Uh, it's different, but that's also brutal, you know, like to go through yes. something like that. Yeah. And, um, and he also has been very clear from the beginning that he understands that there, that this isn't something to put on you expectations mm -hmm. of you're going to be there every yeah. Sunday, you know, this is how it's going to be. He right. has just made allowances for you to take off like one Sunday a month where you're not leading worship. If you need, mm -hmm. you know, I just can't do it. He yeah. it's like, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. it has been a lot of grace for sure. Yeah. I, I know like he probably would want more from me than what I've been able to give him. I mean, I I was consistent anyways, but like now with my back and everything too, like I know he would like for me to be more involved, but he knows I can't, you know, so he's mm -hmm. like really lenient. But um, yeah, it's funny because uh, he, he told me, he said, just pray about it and let me know. And I was like, okay, how about I'll lead for a few weeks and then I'll let you know. And I literally, we laugh about it now. It's been a few years now and I never let him know. <laughs> and I'm still leading. Like I'm their main uh -huh. worship leader, but I've never let him know if I'm in or out. But, you know, I guess I'm in. You know? So that's kind of been funny, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now you have uh, yeah. mentioned your, your back a few times. So I want to turn a corner here because a lot of parents, you and I were talking about this before we started recording, a lot of parents, especially moms, their health just deteriorates thyroid issues, immune deficiency issues, adrenal glands start failing, and you already had back problems. You have lived with chronic pain most of your life because yes, you have fibromyalgia and you're just one of those people that <laughs> your body just doesn't seem to want to do what it's supposed oh, to do most of the yeah. time. So with that, and you've had, seems like even more health issues since Isaiah died. Yeah. Yeah. You know, how do you live with that on top of, you know, the death of Isaiah? And I know you and I both come from a, a background of speaking the word and claiming healing. And, mm -hmm. you know, when those things don't happen, you shared with me, you got a text from someone yesterday uh, on this topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, that's a tough one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, so... You know, I was raised really, really Christian. I was raised in a in a ministry where people got off the needle, heroin, through prayer without withdrawals. Mm. That's that's what wow. I was raised in. Yeah. So like I, I saw, I've seen healing. You know, and you know, my parents believed in healing and all that stuff, and and I lived that whole you know claiming and yeah. rebuking Satan and all that stuff. I lived that in in like for years. I did that. But I never ever got a healing when I was doing that. I never got healing. But it's like I I, I um pushed through and pushed through and kept doing that and kept doing and believing that one day, you know. But I did start eventually kind of uh it's exhausting after a while. When you don't get healing, people that don't live with chronic pain, they can't relate to that because mm -hmm. they're not living. It's like this is what we live every day, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? So um I feel like I had to come to a point, and even before Isaiah died, just a little bit before Isaiah died, I kind of had to come to a point where I was like, well, I have chronic pain every day. That is my reality on earth. Like in the flesh, that is my reality. Does that mean I don't believe that God can't heal me? I He can heal me. I do believe that. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yes. But he hasn't done that yet. So it it gets exhausting to just constantly speak out. I am healed in the name of Jesus. I am healed for years and years and years and not actually experience the healing so um i've got i guess become very private about that mm -hmm. you know yes. when other people are constantly like claiming and you know i've kind of become wanting to pray for you and... a little bit yeah which right, is fine right. pray for me but <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but, but don't, right. don't feel make me feel like you're judging me and condemning me yeah, because exactly. i'm not believing enough or i'm not doing something enough yeah. to receive my yeah. healing 
Yeah. And then, of course, after Isaiah died, that was like a whole nother level because, you know, I would see things sometimes like people would post things on Facebook about how, oh, my my friend or my child or my family member just got in a car accident and yes. see if you just believe everything is fine. Right. Well, I'm so glad I pray for my child every day for their safety exactly. and protection. <laughs> it's like, right. well, yeah, that so is did absolutely I. untrue. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was a worship leader. My yes. son died. We we gave up a lot of time for God. And I'm not yes. saying that in a negative way. It's just that we yes. chose to do that. And we wouldn't have had it any other way. Mm-hmm. But that didn't change the fact that my son still died. Yes. And that didn't change the fact that I still lived with chronic pain. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that's that's been like a huge one. So for me, like what? God is not good when I'm not healed or or am I weak or I don't have enough faith because I still live with pain and because my you know son was killed Mm -hmm. so I mean yeah somebody a good friend of mine asked me yesterday like do you you do pray right (laughs) well of course I do I'm (laughs) desperate for healing but Mm -hmm. do you pray in this way like the way that the bible says and about faith and speaking it out and this and that Mm -hmm. yeah I did it for many many years (laughs) but so it's like you know when you say when you say things like well I did it for years. You already know that they're going to say, well, you're not doing it anymore. So now that's why you're not getting right, healing. Right, right. You, you, how do you know you weren't right on the edge of it and the enemy made you quit? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. I really don't out. think that God would be that cruel. Cruel. like Although we do feel like he's cruel because he didn't stop the death of my child. Right. I mean, so we, that is yeah. something we have to work through. Yes, yes. It but is. I feel like I'm not quite there anymore now, thank God. But I definitely went through that. I'm still not happy about it, obviously. And right, I'm not right, exactly. happy with God that he allowed it. Mm-hmm. But even that, you know what? That's the thing with religion, though. Like, everybody has different opinions. I know you had interviewed somebody one time who said that it, that it's not about him allowing, that he doesn't allow it. So that there's, like, so many different aspects yes. of what mm-hmm. different people think. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like, we're going to know when we go to heaven. That's when we're going to know all the reasons yes. for everything. Why didn't yeah. I get my healing? Why mm-hmm. I, I can't imagine that God's going to put the you know like the stick on me and say you didn't have enough faith and right. with everything that He knows that some of us go through. Like mm-hmm. I can't imagine that He's mean about it. You yeah. know what I mean? Right. Right. I don't know. I, yeah. Such a touchy subject. It is, and I you know I I see more of Him that whole well done. You persevered. Yeah. Exactly. You, you, you persevered and mm-hmm. you still found a way to take my hand and trust me. You still mm-hmm. found a way to believe that I'm good and that I'm faithful, even in the midst of what you did not understand and what brought you so much pain, whether it was physical pain, emotional right. pain. You know, I, I think it's more like the daddy saying, I'm so proud of you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm mm-hmm. so proud of you that you persevered. And mm. you held on. And even when you let go, you held on. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. You let me and hold It's on. actually my pastor. That, yeah, that's what I love about my pastor. He's done that for me. Like, you know, when I felt like I've actually felt hypocritical because I've led worship even for a couple of years and then saying I still feel like I'm not, you know, agreeing with everything exactly mm-hmm. or like, you know. Still I, struggling. I'm struggling, yeah. but I'm doing it, you know, and that's, that's one of the things he always said is like, you're pushing through, like, to me, that's faith, you know what yes. I mean? Yeah. So I, I love that about him. So I don't constantly feel like. Yeah. Faith isn't getting him. what you want from God. You believe enough. So you get what you want. To me, faith mm-hmm. is trusting him through whatever comes, whether you get what you want or not, mm-hmm. whether it's painful or not. Faith right. is still hanging on to God through all of that. Yeah. Yeah, and somehow finding a way to trust him, working our way through that, right, so that we can come out the other side and say, "Well, you are still good, and mm-hmm. you are still faithful." So, mm-hmm. Angelique, what can you tell those who are struggling with this whole area of worship? You know, maybe they're like where you were; they can't even go to church. They either fall apart. I know for a long mm-hmm. time, and I'm still like this. Songs about heaven, which seem to be all the time, <laughs> you know, songs about eternity forever. You know, I just cry and ball and ball and cry thinking yes. about of there and I just want to be yes. here and, you know, or maybe they can't go to church because they're angry. It's like, there's no way I'm, you know, I'm not going. So how can you maybe encourage people in this whole area, especially yeah. where it involves worship and, mm-hmm. and praise? 
Well, I think at the beginning, I don't think that we should put pressure on ourselves. I think it's okay not to be okay. And I think you've even yes. said this to me and uh, I've really had to learn that, you know, right. I think it's okay to put a break on things because there is nothing like child loss. There's no pain like right. child loss. You need to mm -hmm. uh, pay attention to that and like grieve and actually take the time to grieve. Yes. Um, and if something is a trigger and we're not ready, it's okay. You know, I think eventually I had to push myself. I, I did push myself, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But it took a while before I did it. And and I, I actually even, you know, even when I felt pressured by other people, I didn't I didn't receive it. Like I just, right. I, I remember I used to tell my husband, I said, honey, I'm not going to let somebody pressure me into anything if I don't want to go to church because mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm not. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that I'm a bad person because of it got new. Yes. The level strength I had in me, you know what I mean? And I, I think I, that, I don't think I, you know, it's that whole fake it till you make it thing. <laughs> yeah, no. And right. and you know, I mean, finding that line between pushing yourself to get to that point and allowing yourself to not be ready to push yourself. Mm -hmm. We don't have it in us to fake things. <laughs> right. <laughs> we just so, and, and that's one of the reasons I also didn't go it, it wasn't only because of me. It was also because I didn't want to do that to them because I knew that if I was going to go to church, especially the first year there in that, mm -hmm. in that time frame, I would have, you know, they always challenge you to come up or ask for prayer or like, let your guard down. And, you know, I'm really sensitive, like with worship because mm -hmm. I'm a worshiper, like with music, I'll start getting vulnerable. Yes. Once I would have put my wall down, I would have literally lost it. I was in so much pain yes. and I, everybody that loses a child is there. Yeah. It, people wouldn't have known what to do with me. <laughs> exactly. I, I would have wailed like a dog and it would yes. have been uncontrollable. So I feel like I had to, I had to process it on my own for a little while until I was ready to. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I, I'm sure like I could still have that day where oh, yeah. I just let all of it out. I don't think I've ever really let all of it out, you know, mm -hmm. but it's just mm -hmm. so much like, how do you, mm -hmm. some of it, you just can't, you know what I mean? Right. But, but yeah, but I do, I do think there comes a time where we should push ourselves a little bit just because it's good for us to be in relationship with other people. It's good for us to go to church and get close to God and worship and you, we can get close to God at home. But I was gonna, yeah. I, you know, I was gonna say that because we don't have to be in a church service, do we? Right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's true. For me, like the corporate worship part is important, you know, but I just mm -hmm. couldn't at the beginning. And that's right. the whole thing. I think it's okay. It's okay. Like who makes the rules? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. The Who's Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit right. is who should right. be making. And it's going to be different for every one of us because exactly. we have our own relationship with the Lord. Right. And, uh, right. Yeah. So, so I think it's everybody, there's, there's timing for everybody and everybody's going to be different. There are some people who want to go to church to distract themselves. Yes. For me, it was like I was sitting in the fire when I went, because mm. it was I was so vulnerable and it was so painful for me I couldn't do it right you know? yeah yeah and then when I did it I did it crying but I did it yes and, I through, you know? uh -huh. and yeah. now it's getting easier every time but I still have moments where I have those days where I'm just like I don't think I can get through the day today or through the church mm -hmm. service today. right but I right. still do it now you know yeah for me I've been a worship leader over the years and on a worship team and when Becca died we were going to a different church after about a year or so. And I did end up on the worship team. And I, I remember telling the worship leader, I, I mean, there are times it's like, I don't know if you want me up here because I'm just going to cry. <laughs> yeah. yeah <laughs> and, and, exactly. and they're like, just go ahead and cry because that's what my past always the says. The realness too, yeah. of where you are. And yeah. you know, some, it, it's just sometimes our emotion just leaks down our face yeah. <laughs> when but we're you know, in the presence of God. And sometimes it's painful. Yeah. And sometimes it's because I just love him so much. And I'm so right. thankful that I know I'll see Becca again and those kinds mm -hmm. of things. One of the things, though, I did notice. So like when I started coming back and I wasn't ready to like let everything out, I noticed that I started building up walls mm. because, because I felt like if I didn't, then I just would be a mess all the time, an yes. emotional mess. So I kind of like feel like that made me get a little bit desensitized yes. to the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit because I was being protective over my emotions because I yes. knew I would lose it. So I don't know if that's a bad thing, you know, but that was mm -hmm. kind of part of my journey also. So yes. I feel like just like within the last maybe six months or something or a year, mm -hmm. maybe six months or something, 
those walls are starting to come down a little bit. You know what I mean? But it's mm-hmm. like the process too. You know, yes. even though it's almost been four years, uh, you know, I think yes. that stuff really takes time. So, oh, it, yeah, I totally agree. And I, yeah, I was just going to say we have to work through it in our own way, in our own time. Mm-hmm. And I think those who've lost a child, who haven't lost a child, they're not going to understand this. I no. mean, how could they? How can they? Yeah, no. I mean, to them, it's like, well, just get back into praise and worship and God will lift oh. you up. And and it's, yeah. it's just like, uh, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> and and we get that because we have been on the other side, right? Like, I, yes. I remember before Isaiah ever died, you would think about that scenario. Like mm-hmm. my worst nightmare would be nightmare would be to lose my child yes. and you like try to imagine it mm-hmm. but imagining it doesn't oh. even get oh. anywhere yeah. near the reality of something like that happening yeah it's you like the entire wait. iceberg is underneath yeah <laughs> your imagination yeah. is just the tip of the iceberg it's nothing, it's nothing. exactly mm-hmm. it is such yeah. a deep deep pain that i have never in my life experienced and probably never will again mm-hmm. it's just now, so deep. how do you do you see praise different than worship is that something that you see a difference there? Because this is talking about the garment of praise for mm. the spirit of heaviness and despair. Hmm. I don't Do you know. See... Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, is is worship, if you kind of, because it does seem like even scripturally, there seems to be somewhat of a difference, you mm-hmm. know, where praise might be like, well, in the, in the podcast I just recorded, the difference between mourning and grief that I recently discovered that mourning is the outward expression of mm. the inward feeling of, of the mm-hmm. grief, the emptiness, the darkness, the, you know, the depression mourning yeah. is that outward expression. So it's, it's almost like worship maybe is what comes from your heart, the depth of your mm-hmm. heart of the intimacy with God mm-hmm. and yeah. praise is kind of that outer expression of that. Yes. 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 I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, with so, worship, more like heart to heart. Yeah, it just feels more intimate, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So this whole garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, have you found that there have been times that maybe you're feeling that heaviness and despair and discouragement and just that darkness, mm-hmm. that when you do get in God's presence and maybe the times where you didn't feel like it, but you made yourself worship, you made yourself praise God, <laughs> how, mm-hmm. whatever that looked like, that it did lift that heaviness. Yeah, but for that only, time? only when I worship by myself, it does, mm-hmm. this, this doesn't happen to me corporately. Mm-hmm. Like corporately, it's almost like, God, I am weak and I need you to do this for me. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens. Yes. And he gets through it. But uh, when I feel like God comforts me, in that pain, it's when I worship by myself in my in my private mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Maybe even on some of the lives, because when I do the the worship lives, I that's kind of like I'm worshiping by myself in my house. Yes, right, right. You know, it's just I mm-hmm. just happen to have a microphone and it's going live. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But that's when I've had so many moments of just like I'll start singing and worshiping and and I just feel like a peace, or I start crying in the midst of worship, and it's like mm-hmm. a cleansing cry. And or God will show me something, you know, he'll show me like a pain, like an area of pain and and, and I'll cry. Because it's almost like a revelation cry, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, mm-hmm. Wow, I didn't realize this hurt so bad. And then it's like a healing cry then, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. And he'll give me peace that surpasses our understanding in those moments. But it doesn't happen to me partly. And I think mm-hmm. partially it's because I have that, remember I was telling you, I put kind of like mm-hmm. a wall. Yeah, yeah. Like to yeah. myself publicly, and I, which honestly... I feel like I need to get a little more humble sometimes. And I think that's part of it because mm. I'm, like, I'm afraid to show too much of my right. weakness in front of everybody where mm-hmm. at home, I don't worry about that, you know? So that's right. probably maybe, I don't know. Mm. Okay. I think some people yeah. are a lot better than being vulnerable than maybe I am mm-hmm. in conversation. I can be vulnerable, like right, right now, right. Like, uh-huh. I'm, uh-huh. That I'm vulnerable, but it's different when I'm leading worship, you know? Right. I don't know. Right. So, yeah. So yeah, yeah, definitely in my private, private worship time more than anything. Mm -hmm. You know, I think about like putting on this garment of praise and we've been talking a lot about, about this in the context of music being Mm -hmm. praise and worship, but I think there are other ways and other things that we can do to praise him and to Mm -hmm. worship him, even if it's just listening to music. But I think sometimes even just for me, like last night we were out, we came back 
and we're in Arizona right now and the stars are just crazy in abundance and you could see the Milky Way and mm. the sky was just spectacular. I, it was just splendorous, I, just wow. unreal. Yeah. And I look at that and I think, God, you were big enough to create all of this. You're big enough to take care of me. Yeah. You're big enough to take care of my pain, to take care of my family and some of the things that the hard things that we're going through, my kids are going through back home right now. And I think that was praise. I, I mean, just mm -hmm. just going out and looking at nature. You and I love the ocean. Right. <laughs> we, yeah. we, we've, you know, to go out and just find a, a place of nature and just sit and take mm -hmm. it in. And yeah, and I actually have enjoyed that a lot more, especially since Isaiah died. Like right after he died, I really felt like I connected with the sky a lot more. Yes, in general, nature and even just going on bike rides and yes. and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I yeah. don't know what it is. Just being in his creation mm -hmm. somehow for me it it lifts me somehow. It lifts yeah. my soul somehow. And it yeah, just maybe helps put things in perspective, which I think is a way of praising him, whether we verbalize yeah, it definitely. or not. And it does lift that heaviness somewhat. Yeah, 100% for me too. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, I just want to make sure that everyone knows it's not just limited to music, but no. music is a pathway to the soul. Right. I mean, God created right. it to do that. You know, so if you have, if you feel like you have some of these walls, you know, like Angelique has talked about, and, and I know I had to have too. That's one reason I didn't want to go to church because I knew I would just fall apart. I just, mm -hmm. I, I couldn't do that <laughs> in yeah. such a public place, <laughs> you know, right. so to lead worship, to stand up there, it's like, you have to put a guard up somehow because it's like, if I fall apart, how am I going to lead anybody? <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to be in a puddled mess going nowhere. <laughs> right. And, uh, so, you know, but there's, there's just so much more to praise and worship than, than the music part of it. And yet God has created that as a pathway to our soul, which I think mm -hmm. we can see anytime we listen, whether it's worship, praise music, whether it's country music or classical music, it does something to our soul. Yeah. And so I think it's important to get to a point where we can participate and mm -hmm. I know I hear from parents, it's like, I can't listen to music. I, I, I can't do it. And it's like, oh, how awful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's, I, you know, but to get to the point where that wall isn't up and you let yourself fall mm -hmm. apart in that. And yeah. like you said, let that healing begin to wash us. And, and yeah, it's, it's going to be painful. It is painful. And I think, I think a good one also to, to mention is, we do have to be careful that we don't get so hardened that we get rebellious. And I'm speaking from experience here because mm -hmm. this is definitely what I've done. I have done that. And once you go there, it's hard to go back. Yes. It took me a while because I, I have, I have had moments where I feel like I've gotten rebellious and angry and just from being closed up and not mm -hmm. letting God in and letting yes. other people in. So I think we have to be careful not to get too hardened. Mm -hmm. Like in the, in the midst of trying to take our time, like to still yes. be, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so I, I do. I, I remember yeah. years ago, this had nothing to do with Becca dying, but being in a situation where you now I, I cry easily. I'm a leaker even before Becca died. But I remember and I making people uncomfortable. I even had a pastor tell me one time, you know, Laura, you can't cry when you pray for people. It just makes everybody around you uncomfortable. And I oh. have come to find out that... It's like, well, I can't turn them on and off. I, I can't. They just come. I feel things deeply. And I have found that more people actually, it opens the door because I honestly think them that feel like the it's okay. wrong, not you. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I, I went through a time where I somehow managed, nothing made me cry. And I realized God spoke to me once. It was just kind of in a weird thing. I'd put in an old videotape of, I can't remember. And something in there just broke me. And I remember the Lord speaking to my heart that I cannot get to a point where I harden myself where I don't cry because then my heart is hard. I mean, that's what happened. I had hardened my heart because I was so tired of crying and being a crier. Mm -hmm. And it was like I was bound and determined that wasn't going to be me anymore. And it right. made my heart go whole, hard and bitter. Mm -hmm. So I have learned that, yes, crying wow. and tears, as painful as it is, it, it means that we're tender. 
and that's a good place to be, even though it right. may not feel good and it's very vulnerable. Right. It's a yeah. <laughs> yeah. I so agree. we are going to play a song for you. Mm-hmm. And it is at, now, Angelique, is this the song that you were talking about that you wrote or is this Isaiah's song? Yeah, I wrote the song three weeks after Isaiah died and it's called Out of the Deep. Okay, so we're going to play that and then we'll be back. that song, I know that the listeners have felt that pathway to their soul. Angelique, I'm going to ask you, do you have any last thoughts for the listeners either about this verse that God will give us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness or despair? Just what are some final thoughts that you might have for everyone? Yeah, I I would just say, don't give up. I've seen a lot of people like just joining like different uh, support groups on Facebook. I've seen a lot of people that, that don't know the Lord mm-hmm. that are suicidal after losing their child. So it's like, we, even as Christians, we understand the heaviness yes. of like the depth of losing a child and how close 
even we could feel of yes. wanting to not live anymore. Uh, yeah, know? we all want to die. I mean, we may not. Yeah, be it's like we might not want to kill ourselves, but we, we don't, don't want to be here. We live. ask God to take us. <laughs> right. And I mean, and the thing is, maybe I didn't realize that I felt that way maybe the first year. But after the first year, that's when I, I remember telling my husband, honey, I have lost a will to live. I feel like mm -hmm. I want to live. Like, right. but I wasn't suicidal. So that's right. like, I feel like the right. difference between. Yes really truly being a believer and maybe not you know the, I, the whole time I always knew like I don't want to die like I don't mm -hmm. want to live but I don't want to die you know what yes I mean? and I feel like everybody's going to go through that phase mm -hmm. after losing a child and I just want to encourage everybody to not give up because it does get easier and, and you know this too I mean it, it doesn't mean that you're not going to get hit really really hard in the middle of it again even yes. after four years maybe 10 mm -hmm. years who knows yes the first two, three years are the most difficult, I feel like. Mm -hmm. But it does get easier. Like even when you feel really heavy grief, it's like you learn to manage it somehow. You know what I mean? Yes. So it just becomes part of who you are or part of your life. Mm -hmm. So you really like do your learn chronic pain that you've lived with. Right, right. That mm -hmm. you somehow like it's just part of what you do. What, yeah. You know, and sometimes it's kind of interesting because like right now, sometimes you're totally incapacitated. Yeah. <laughs> you're yeah, you're right. doing this from laying on your couch. Right. Other you're times the pain is eating. there, you can function, you you know, you function right. through the pain. And sometimes it just takes you out. And I think that's the right. same way with our grief with the death of our child. Right. And you don't you just just don't give up. And I'm I'm not gonna say God doesn't give us more than you can handle like oh, everybody so not says true. in the world. Oh, well yeah. I mean, child loss is more than anybody can handle, yes. honestly, yes. you know, mm -hmm. but, but I really do think um, if we continue to push through and be okay with not being okay, mm -hmm. you know, I think that we will get stronger and um, it does get easier and just to not give up, you know, and press into God, even though it's hard. And, and but also don't feel guilty when you can't mm, yes. feel guilty when you can't press into God. Mm -hmm. you know because like, yes. he knows and he'll meet you on the other side like he'll he'll meet you where you're at i think you know yes so yes i totally yeah. agree so how can reavers connect with you and your music i have a music facebook page called angelique marketing music and then also uh instagram and my music is actually on spotify it's on itunes it's on really mm -hmm. any of the platforms um, but my name is, the spelling of my name is A-N-G-E-L-I-Q-U-E. -E, and then Marketon, M-A-R-K-E-T-O-N. So. Okay. And I will put a link to that in the show notes to your Facebook page. Oh, thank you so thank much you. for joining me. And Dave and I look forward to seeing you and Tony when we're back in Florida in a few months. We'll get together. Oh, awesome. We have to. <laughs> awesome. Yes. So. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. I always, I always enjoy talking to you. That, that's great. Yes. I think you can see why I love this lady so much. She just allows herself to be so real with her struggles, and that is so refreshing as a leader in the body of Christ, and a worship leader, no less. Doesn't that song do a great job of summing up our swirling thoughts and emotions? It really is like a modern-day psalm of David crying out, in desperation, like she sings, in the valleys, would you please breathe life in me again? In the shadow of your wings, I will cling to you. Draw me out of the deep. Will you reach down from on high to hold me? And then to leave the song feeling like it's just hanging there with, they could not rise, they fell beneath my feet. Knowing that it's so untrue. It was so untrue in that moment when she wrote it and sang it in that place of darkness and deep grief of mourning. Like Angelique said, it was written and sung in faith for her future. And I am praying you can do the same, hanging on to the hope that somehow God not only can, but he will give you a garment of praise for your spirit of heaviness and despair in your place of grief. I hear from many of you how the Grieving Parents Sharing Hope podcast has been a lifeline to you after the death of your child. Did you know that this ministry can continue because listeners like you support us? One way that's very easy to do that is through Amazon Smile. You can select GPS Hope as your charity of choice so that every time you order, 
a portion of your purchase is donated to GPS Hope at no extra expense to you on qualifying purchases. All you have to do is go to smile.amazon.com and select GPS Hope as the organization you wish to support. And then whenever you go to Amazon to order something or look something up, make sure it's through smile.amazon. So you may want to bookmark it or pin it to make sure you remember to go to smile.amazon. I will also put a link straight to GPS Hope in Amazon Smile in the show notes. Of course, you can also support this podcast and ministry monthly. Every dollar helps, even if you can give just a little bit. Just go to gpshope.org slash support to set up an automatic payment, or you can go there to give a special gift as just a way of saying thank you. Okay, enough of all that, right? Let's get to this week's birthday segment. Mary Elizabeth Engelbert was born on October 30th and left us at age 21. James was born on October 30th and left us at 17 months. Zen Dylan Ko was born on November 1st and left us at age 17. Chaney Patrick was born on November 4th and left us at age 20. As always, we celebrate the day these children came into this world. It will always be a special day for these families. If you would like to have your child's birthday announced the week of his or her birthday, I would love to be able to do that. All you have to do is go to gpshope.org slash birthdays. Fill the form in there and we will add your son or daughter the week of his or her birthday to this birthday segment. And Dave will also send you an email to remind you to listen that week. I want to remind you and encourage you to share your thoughts on this discussion I had with Angelique by going to this podcast episode number 183 on the website, gpshope.org, and leave a comment. And I'll also put a link to that in the show notes. I am truly amazed to think that that song rose up from within Angelique around three weeks after her son's totally unexpected death. That is a true worshiper, and I truly believe that is one reason Angelique is able to continue to lead worship, because she continues to be raw and real with God within the turmoil and the grief and the worship and the relationship she has with him. Something we didn't talk about is that there was a trial with the driver of the truck. So as some of you have also experienced, it drags things out for so much longer constantly immersing you in the circumstances of your child's death. I cannot imagine what that is like. And if that's where you are, I am so sorry. No matter where any of us are on this unwanted journey, I do want to say that God really does have for you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness and despair. It is being woven together right now in your place of darkness. I know sometimes it feels like he lets us try it on for size and then he takes it back, doesn't it? But it is your garment being made just for you in your unique place of earthly loss. I have found that sometimes we get to wear it for quite a while and then it's like it gets taken back for some alterations and adjustments. And I think that will be the case for the rest of our time here on earth. But at least we have one. So if you have not gotten a chance to try yours on for size yet, Remember to hold on. Pain eases. There is hope and there is a garment for you.